Schalke 04 from Gelsenkirchen and Borussia Dortmund are the two footballing titans of the Ruhr. Two really great clubs with a tradition going back decades. They face each other on the pitch twice a year. A derby like that needs a bit of fire and emotion, otherwise it's boring. The arch-rivals divide fans and the entire region. You become a football pro precisely for such derbies. We really look forward to them. I don't think there's anything bigger in Germany than Schalke versus Dortmund. The tension discharges on the day of the match. How deep is the enmity? Somewhere in Dortmund on the 14th of April 2012, the morning of the derby. Muss ein bisschen dezent halten, ne? nicht, dass es sehr auffällt. Ja, ich versuch's. Dezenter geht's halt einfach nicht. Ja. Ist das okay so? Das ist in Ordnung. Sehr gut. Kannst du so machen. Blau und weiß. Blue and white for life. Sie erzählt das so. She likes to tell the story of how I introduced her. <laughs> genau. Also es war irgendwie... We were at the house of his best friend's girlfriend for a birthday party. They were sitting in the garden and I came out. He introduced me by saying, this is my girlfriend, Julia. She's a Schalke fan. That was it. I was immediately unpopular. If you're born in Dortmund, it's a non-issue. You're not going to be a Bayern Munich fan, of course, but you're definitely not going to be a Schalke fan. So it was never an issue for me. If you're born in Essen, though, you can choose. I had many friends who were Schalke fans. I also knew Gladbach fans, Dortmund and Bayern Munich fans. I had one very good friend at the time who was a Schalke fan. She took me to the stadium for the first time, and so I got stuck with them. The first time at the stadium is a big experience. My father was also a Schalke fan. When I was a little girl, he always took me to the old stadium. That's how I went for the first time. I've been a Schalke supporter ever since. An office in Dortmund, two fans face to face every day. My grandmother always used to knit black and yellow scarves for my brothers, but I was too young for that. When Dortmund was in the 1989 Cup final, it was clear that would be my club. That's the town I'm from. It's not so easy in our family. My brother-in-law likes Dortmund, but my other brother-in-law is passionate about Schalke. When I was introduced by my brother-in-law, I was asked straight away what camp I belong to. He was happy that I'm a Schalke supporter. It's a very special fan rivalry. There are only 36 kilometers between Gelsenkirchen and Dortmund. You're told straight from birth whether you're a Dortmund fan or a Schalke fan. You have different football religions in your head and that comes across in a stadium the football temple of Borussia Dortmund fans are waiting to be let into the inner sanctum I would like to welcome you to the Signal Iduna Park one day before the big match. This stadium was built in 1972-74 for the World Cup. It was refurbished in 2006 and the London Times wrote a year ago that we're the best stadium in the world. They were right. Ex-professional Archie Schmidt loves showing fans around his stadium. He proudly looks back at his time with Dortmund. That's my picture here. That was taken in 1965. That was the first time we won the cup. We beat Aachen. 
You see me holding it up. We've been German league champions seven times now, and twice we've won the cup. The third time will come. Descent among the young. We don't know that, but we believe it. This boy proudly explains that he likes neither Dortmund nor Schalke, he likes Bayern Munich. His mother, on the other hand, is a Schalke fan. Aki Schmidt points out that she won't be happy after tomorrow's derby. I think that the people of the Ruhr really live for football. I think that becomes obvious when you realise that everyone from this area is a fan of some club. That's what makes football in the Ruhr what it is. The last training session on the day of the derby. The Schalke players work through their session under the strict eyes of their fans. The Ruhr means hard work. I think it's incredibly important to these fans that the players work hard on the pitch. This fighting and working are rooted in the area. Football is at home here in the Ruhr. This is where it developed, and I think there's nothing bigger in Germany than Schalke versus Dortmund. In the opinion polls, Dortmund and Schalke are the two favourites of the two million football fans. That's the result of a survey which analysed the leisure behaviour of the local population. Football mobilizes huge crowds every weekend. High school students prefer Dortmund, as do the students of the Ruhr University. This team has intellectual appeal. Farmers, meanwhile, have a preference for Schalke. This team has the biggest number of fans from an agricultural background, namely the nearby Munsterland region. Those who drive combine harvesters during the week will watch Schalke on Saturdays. The housewives of the Ruhr have similar leanings. It's the only local club for them. Things are still quiet on the day of the big match. One Schalke fan is enjoying the calm before the storm on a trotting course. Klaus Fichter is a retired football pro. He still knows the Ruhr from below. I trained to be a miner, which was the standard job. I spent two and a half years working underground. But then the football career came along. My father played football and my brother was a contract player. I just did the same. It was all about football for us. I was born here. I really loved the players who played at the time. I always wanted to play for Dortmund. That was my dream. In an under-20s game, Schalke played Dortmund, and I scored three goals in that match. Schalke wanted to get me to come to Gelsenkirchen, but Dortmund was the only team for me. They were gods for me. They were gods for me. 
When I came to Schalke in the under-16 squad, my first match was against Dortmund. It was made clear to us that there was a big rivalry between these two teams. We'd always fought in the school playground, saying that Dortmund was bad or Schalke was bad. So we learned that from a young age. We're our parents' children, and our parents start making bets at work, down the mine or in the steelworks. If they had a moment, football was always the first thing they talked about. And when work was over, they went to a bar where they carried on talking about football. This went on and on until the match. We were aware of that as children. The day of the derby is a holiday here. Schalke Markt is the living room of Schalke supporters. The bars start filling up in the morning. The fans sing to their team. It has its roots a hundred years ago when these two clubs were formed. Schalke really breathed some life into German football. They won the championship time after time. In the 30s, the advantage was here in the Ruhr. Schalke 04, one of the longest established football clubs, are German champions once again. After a break of 16 years, the formidable goal scorers of Gelsenkirchen won the title for the seventh time. They were literally showered in jubilation in their hometown, and even our camera crew, who got used to such cheering over the decades, confirmed that it's never been like this before. At the moment, Dortmund is in the lead. Schalke haven't won this trophy since 1958. These two clubs have similar fans. Schalke fans go crazy, and so do we. I'm going to see if I can find a telephone number through the fan line. I want to check if I can wear the jersey. Moldenhauer, hallo, ich habe eine Frage. Und zwar haben mein Mann und ich für heute Nachmittag Karten. Ähm, Julia und ihr Mann werden sitzen, zusammen, even though she likes Schalke und he likes Dortmund. Their tickets are in the Dortmund section of the stand and Julia wants to know whether she can wear her Schalke jersey. She will be allowed in, she's told, but she's seriously advised not to try it. Gut, dann werde ich das äh, tun. Ich habe keine Lust, äh, mich verhauen zu lassen. Okay, alles klar. Vielen Dank. <lacht> Tschüss. Das ist voll schrecklich. It's terrible that I can't wear my jersey in my own stadium. My heart bleeds. Mine doesn't. The Schalke pennant was already there when I came into this office. The least I could do was bring a Dortmund pennant along. The walls weren't blue and yellow yet. Then we turned this paperweight into a plinth, and now the winner of the derby is allowed to put his pennant on the plinth until the next derby. Und so ist es, dass seitdem der Derby-Sieger seinen Wimpel auf dieses Podest stellt bis zum nächsten Derby. Mein Wimpel stand lange Zeit oben. My pennant was up there for a long time, but for a while now it's been standing a bit lower. Maybe I should just put a bigger pennant there so that it looks more impressive. I've played in at least 15 derbies. That was when Schalke was going through a rough patch and we were going through a good one in the 50s and 60s. We won most of the time. The derbies between Schalke and Dortmund are legendary. We had one match that was absolutely incredible. It was foggy and visibility was down to 10 meters. The referee let it go on. 
plötzlich innerhalb von drei Minuten sah unsere Suddenly, within the space of three minutes, this is what we could see. Die Kameraleute konnten sich ganz dem Genuss The camera crew could just enjoy the match. In der 47. Minute In the 47th minute, it was 5-0 for Dortmund. Schalke then managed to score twice. Our slow motion man has managed to capture one in the fog for you. But the rest of the match got lost in the fog. The 1969 derby hasn't been forgotten either. The stadium in Dortmund was more than sold out. I don't know what happened, whether there was a goal, but suddenly loads of people were on the pitch. There weren't any fences at the time. The guards with the dogs were there, and the dogs got all worked up, and one dog bit Friedel Rausch in the behind, another one bit Gerd Neusser in the thigh. But I don't think we lost the match. I think it was a draw. That's why nobody complained. For the following match, Mr. Siebert had an idea. He brought four or five young lions onto the pitch. They were only the size of German shepherd dogs. That wasn't a problem. It was a joke. It wasn't aggressive. People teased each other a bit and people made bets. The losers would have to buy everyone a beer. But it was friendly. It's always been the case that all the players got together afterwards to have a beer. We really gave everything on the pitch for our team. It was always something special. Dortmund versus Schalke was always a special match because you weren't allowed to lose. You didn't have to become German champions, but you did have to beat Schalke. In 2007 came the temporary climax of the rivalry. Schalke got the chance to secure the German championship at their match against Dortmund. Thousands of Schalke fans certain of victory walked provocatively through Dortmund city centre. In Gelsenkirchen, 70,000 Schalke fans went to their stadium for the public screening. It was to be the biggest football party since the championship of 1958. We're definitely going to win in Dortmund. Everything else is impossible. We're so close. 49 years is enough. It's our turn. That's all there is to say about it. But the derby of the century took a calamitous course. It triggered powerful emotions. The German championship title depended on that one match. When one club thinks they've made it and then the arch enemies completely put an end to that dream, then it's unbelievable. A big dream has been shattered, and in a fixture between these two clubs, it was very intense in 2007. A nightmare for Schalke, gloating on the other side. Finally a realistic result. We spent the whole season waiting to really beat Schalke properly, and we did that. I'm very happy. A great derby victory. Schalke once again aren't German champions, and that's a good thing. There's always been rivalry. That's a good thing. But it mustn't turn to hatred. I don't like that. Whenever there's an away game, Dortmund fans gather at the city station. And among them is always a suffering Schalke fan. Moldenhauer finds it difficult to cope with the atmosphere. <laughs> the 
The Schalke fan wasn't expecting this level of aggression. You're accosted, even when you're just on your way there. They abuse me for what I'm wearing and laugh at me for being a fan of a club like Schalke. They ask what I'm even doing in Dortmund. People have told him several times that he can't go out with a Schalke fan. With kickoff coming closer, the mood becomes more intense among Schalke fans too. Matches between Schalke and Dortmund are high security events for the police. They want to prevent an encounter between the two fan groups at all costs. Getting on the train in Dortmund was uncomfortable and I wasn't allowed to say a word about being a Schalke fan on the train. It was just too risky for me to get on a special bus like that. These derbies are always a bit extreme. The derby between Schalke and Dortmund is always called the mother of all derbies. The average fan will drink quite a lot before the match. I'd say 70% have had their first beer at 10 in the morning, so by the time the match starts, they don't know who's playing who or why. They have to ask after the match how it went. They have no idea what's going on. I just want to be happy and healthy and enjoy the game. That's all that matters. Rival colleagues have a tradition of meeting on neutral ground near the stadium before the derby. This time it's near the Schalke home ground. The host makes a point of rolling up in the club colours. Der Martin. The area around the stadium is firmly in the grip of Schalke fans for an hour before kickoff. Dortmund fans aren't welcome here. They're funneled into the away fan block via a separate entrance. But Dortmund fan Martin Bieberstein isn't one of them. He and his colleague, the Schalke fan, march through the Schalke entrance. It's not easy. Oh. 
My boss in the bank used to say, Mr. Bieberstein, never discuss political, religious or football affiliation with your clients. It's the same when I go to Gelsenkirchen. I have to pay attention to where I go. I don't want to provoke anyone, but I want to show support for my club and I have to be able to wear my colours. You have to have enough respect to let other people wear their colours. Of course it has to be respected. I think we've watched matches together several times now. It's always a bit touch and go. It's not entirely harmless. These matches are always extreme situations. I once went to Schalke with my friend Lothar Emmerich, who died eight years ago. He really wanted to go. We were on the car park. They recognized us and wouldn't let us out for an hour and a half. They kept throwing things in front of the car, so I told Lothar he'd never get me to come back here. <laughs> Aki Schmidt now prefers to watch the derby with his Dortmund friends in the allotment around the corner. Hello, good day. Hello, good day, together. Time to get everyone's guesses as to the final score. 1-4. <laughs> Cabaret artist Uwe Luko is a guest in a VIP box on the Schalke side. Einer der ersten Flankengötter. Ach, hier ist unsere, genau, 103. It was a chance event for me. My brother Jörg and I always snuck into the living room and switched the television on. Our parents were out, and as chance would have it, that was the evening of the legendary match between Dortmund and Liverpool. It was the final of the European Cup. It was a highly dramatic game, and in extra time, Stanley Buda, the former Schalke legend, won the game for Dortmund. I was 12 at the time, and it really moved me. After that, I was a Dortmund fan. He says he used to go to a childminder, and everyone there was a Schalke fan. He didn't know what club to pick, so he picked Schalke too. Shortly before the start of the match, the two colleagues go their separate ways. Their friendship is suspended for the duration. They will go to their respective fan blocks. The atmosphere is tense. It's a home game for Schalke. There are only around 6,000 Dortmund fans among the 55,000 Schalke fans. The match hasn't even started yet, but the fans are already competing. that happen on the day before and all around the stadium and also on the pitch are very emotional and intense. In unsere NRW Stadien an diesem Nachmittag nach Schalke am 140. It's time to hear from the reporter in the stadium. At the moment, we can still hear status quo blasting out in the sold-out stadium. The roof is open, of course. The weather's good, around 13 degrees. Everything set for a big football Bundesliga match. I 
I think the Schalke players will be a bit paralyzed in their performance today. They really mustn't lose in front of all their fans. You're really aware of the atmosphere because lots of people who have to go to work come up to me and tell me that we have to win the match. Otherwise, they have to listen to the comments of their colleagues for the next six months. I know that this is a special match for the Ruhr and that's why we look forward to it because it's for matches like this that we want to be professional footballers. I'm not good on my feet. I tend to see everything on the television. But it's not the same as being in the stadium. When the team came out and everyone got up and sang, I'm not the emotional type, but that was emotional. Es ist wirklich so ein Gefühl wie, ich weiß nicht, so das geht dann richtig durch. Schalke's expectations are huge. To start with, justified. Schalke, Jefferson Farfan with an incredible shot. Nine minutes into play against the German champions. The derby is simple. The team at the top can lose against the team at the bottom. That's the way it is, and that's the appeal. Damit sind wir wieder Are the teams well matched? Auf Schalke, Sabine Töpperwien, zwei Mannschaften auf Augenhöhe. Absolutely. It's the number one, the German champion, against the number three. Both have won the German championship seven times, but that's not what matters here on the pitch. What matters is that Schalke are leading 1-0 because of a goal in the ninth minute. Mein Gott, nee. Aber ich glaube, ich wechsle mich gleich ein, glaubst du, er hat... Die Scheiße kriegt aber auch noch hin, ehrlich doch. Mein Gott, nee. Das war aber auch super gehalten von dem 100 Stein. Die 17. Dortmund makes a comeback in the 17th minute by equalizing 1-1. Derby, lots of Schalke fans can't believe what they're seeing. One all after just 17 and a half minutes. The fans are captivated. Both camps have had something to cheer about. Schalke has lost the last three derbies. They want a change in their fortunes today. The 61,673 spectators are creating a great atmosphere. Christoph Metzelder gets special attention at the derby. Now a star for Schalke, he played for Dortmund until 2007.
Metzelda is a different issue. You could think that it's normal to change to your home team, but it wasn't so obvious with him because he played passionately for Dortmund. That situation is preposterous. You can be a bit provocative like this. Andreas Müller waves at me every day from my wall too. Andreas Müller mir jeden Tag da zuwinkt. Dortmund supporters are celebrating and that of course infuriates Schalke fans. I'm definitely the one who has to put up with more grief. His friends sometimes try to convert me. Come to our side, then you'll at least be able to celebrate some successes. But that's out of the question. Definitely. <laughs> An intense game that still holds what it promised. Dortmund is now leading 2-1 in the lion's den against arch-rival Schalke. I know how fans think. I know how fans love their club. I know what they do for it. They pay their last penny. Their whole lives focus on Dortmund, even privately. So I can understand a lot, but I can't understand that it turns to violence. It's too involved. It's not fun for me like that. It's got nothing to do with passion anymore. It's just blind hatred, and we don't need that in football. Things are hotting up. Dortmund are facing a historic victory. And now it's over. Dortmund win the 140th derby, defeating Schalke 2-1. A worthy opponent after a great match with a great atmosphere in a top class game. Einem intensiven Spitzenspiel auf Augenhöhe mit 2 zu 1. The balance of power for the 2011-2012 season has been resolved by the derby. Dortmund have defeated their arch rivals and are right on track to becoming German champions. Schalke are third in the table. Some are celebrating, others are in mourning. Last season was a bit annoying. People teased me a lot. No championship title in my whole lifetime. I know all the insults. I'll always be a Schalke fan. If they go down a league, bad luck for me. That's what I said last year. They were really bad last year. But I wouldn't change loyalties just because my club were in the second league. Was man einmal ist, muss man bleiben. Aber 
Also Fußball ist für mich auch Football is a cultural asset to me because we live in a very fast-paced world and football manages to unite generations from age 90 to age 6. Everyone's together at half past three on Saturday when it's football time. And that's particularly evident during these derbies. The Monday morning after, a winner and a loser come together. Glücksritter unterwegs. Ich kann den Derby-Sieger Schal ja wieder aufhängen, wo ich ja. ihn auch abgenommen habe beim letzten Mal. Aber nur mit äh, unter Widerwillen. The scarf goes back up. Martin is happy. Mark chooses not to lend a helping hand. So, haben wir schon verpasst. Guck mal, schön, oder? Ja, schön, schön ist anders. Ja, ja, guck mal. Das ist was von mir. This is part of me, part of my history. Even in 10 years' time, I'll be able to talk about how Dortmund won this German title. It becomes part of my life. And you can always bring it up, especially here, where we're so close together. The relationship between Schalke and Dortmund is a bit strange. There's an up and then a down, but it goes both ways. And if the German champions stay in the Ruhr, then that's nothing to complain about. That's how good unity sounds here. But the next derby is only a short time away.